Welcome back to How to Build an F-14 Tomcat. Uh, I've got a little bit of work done. Not much since the last videos. The stabs, you can see they've had the tape removed from them. I've gotten them fitting really, really nice up against the fuselage. You can see with it pushed all the way up against the fuselage, we have a nice... we got a little bit of a gap here, which is exactly what we want. Just because the fuselage curves away from the stab on the full scale, so that's that's accurate. And you can see as you work your way down through here, there's a nice tight fit along the whole thing. Now, of course, we won't have this fitting tied up against the fuselage. We'll actually have it pulled back about 30 to 40 thousandths. So you can see, if I'm quit blocking the light for you guys, you get a nice even gap along the fuselage with that. So as the stab moves, it doesn't hit anything. It just goes nice and nice and smooth. Should be able to get a lot of surface deflection with it. So the stabs, I gotta, I need to shoot a coat of primer here on the leading edge and up against the root where I did the filling, and also along the little areas here on the tips around the antenna and whatnot. So I'll do that, pull the tape off, finish cleaning up the last little bits of the uh, contact adhesive that's on it, and both stabilizers will be completely done and ready for molding. So stabs are there, the vertical stab bearings, they're pretty much, uh, I did one little bit last coat of filling on them. I'm gonna shoot a bit of primer on there, make sure there's no spots that need to be touched up on both of those do a, a panel line some screw detail and those will be ready for molding the rudders we have up here I gotta cap the ends the, the bottom and the top with a piece of a uh, plate or some body filler and they'll be done same with the flaps the tips need to be capped off and they'll be done um, the nose cone I'm gonna adjust its mounting with a little edge there just a little bit to make it a little bit more even get where it slides up against the fuselage I'm gonna get that fitting really nice and tight and then it's ready for molding I got in contact with a, a gentleman about possibly molding uh, vacuum forming my clear canopy and windscreen he's should be getting back to me on the size make sure he can actually do it give you guys an idea this is this canopy from point here to point here is 20 inches long so I mean it's it's pretty big piece of clear plastic eventually so this is ready for molding just gotta do some parting planes the windscreens ready to be molded for the the molds for that that way I can get the plugs built for the vacuum form parts the fuselage really other than filling in a little bit around the nose cone make it a really nice fit and doing a few things here on the back side of the fuselage the fuselage is done uh, the wings that's what I worked on last time I haven't gotten anything else done for those of you who are interested in learning how to do more with their work I've still got some to do so don't worry I will be making more videos on that see I got the body filler here on the tips that's ready for sanding that way I can show you guys how to get the the litho plate formed around tight curves um oh, let's see with the mold making supplies i did a little bit of some test layups not sure quite how you guys will how good y'all can see this but you can see it's a nice smooth surface little uh irregular inconsistencies in the surface here and there mostly because the shop's all dusty so a little bit of dust got in the PVA when I sprayed it and just kind of puts little, uh, looks like little pieces of dust in the surface coat. This particular layup I used a couple, I think it was four layers of three quarter ounce cloth. Then I went with three layers of two ounce cloth, two layers of six ounce cloth, two layers of 17 and a half ounce cloth. Put a piece of, I believe it's three or four millimeter Depron, which is the black piece you see. I took a half inch brass tube and just stabbed it to put little indentations to give the epoxy somewhere to kind of seep down in hoping that would give it more of a stick and then I did another layer of 17 and a half ounce glass cloth 
across the top of it. Um, the reason for these test lamps is just to make sure that the fabric, since it's really heavy on the back side, just make sure you can do all of it in one sitting without having to let it cure and make sure the, the fabric doesn't print through the surface coat. You can see as a close up, the surface coat is extremely thin. Probably you won't get a really good, eh, that's about the best shot as I can get for you guys. But uh, that's all fiberglass, and I mean, it's just a little bit of its surface coat. This particular layup is 160 thousandths thick, not including the Depron, and just over a quarter inch thick, including the Depron. I'm going to try and use this stuff a little bit more to try and get some more bulk out of the, the molds, especially for like the fuselage and the wings and all. The second one is basically identical to the first, except instead of using three quarter ounce cloth, I, cloth, I went straight to two ounce glass cloth. So I did three layers of two ounce glass cloth, two layers of six ounce, two layers of 17 and a half, the Depron, and then another layer of 17 and a half. Um, it's a little bit thinner. It's about 130 thousandths without the Depron and about 220, 230 thousandths with the Depron, depending on where you measure it. So it is a little bit thinner, but uh, strength wise, you can't tell any, any difference. Main reason for doing this, like I said, was making sure you don't get any fabric print through from the actual fiberglass cloth through the mold surface. Um, a couple of guys have told me it takes, sometimes it'll take a day or two for the print through to actually show up as the, the epoxy cures and everything starts to shrink a little. So I'm going to leave these here and instead of getting started making molds of the actual Tomcat this weekend, I'm going to let these sit for a full week so it'll be at least two weeks before I get any molds made. But it makes sure it makes me feel better making sure that this stuff's not going to print through and ruin a set of molds so also while i did that i needed a new spinner for my fuck 190 and since the company who makes the spinner in germany is no longer making them this is the original one cut out for the solo propeller it won't fit a tube blade anymore obviously since it has three cutouts but anyway since the company in germany is not making these spinners anymore a gentleman off of RC Universe let me molest this one, and out of that, I got that. So here we have a completed mold for the uh, for the Focke Wolf 190 spinner. The only difference between my mold and the German company is mine actually has all the rivet detail and panel on molded right into it. I don't know if you guys would see it, but you can see a little bit of chunks of primer there, and then the the panel on and more rivets a little further down in there so that's that mold also gave me a little bit of a refresher since it's been a, been a while since I've made any molds so that's basically where we are with the Tomcat right now um, I have done a little bit of CAD work drawing up the cockpit and SolidWorks that's coming along fairly well as in slow that's a lot of detail on these things um i did a little bit of work here on the table you can see all the lines and some measurements here this is actually just a bunch of math to figure out what stroke uh actuator cylinders i need for the wing sweep i still haven't decided if we're going to do one or two or six no i'm just kidding it's going to be one or two actuators one per wing or uh, opposing threads for one actuator, one drive motor for both wings. And I just got a couple of different dimensions away from the pivot point, one and one or two in front and a couple aft of it. So that'll figure it out. Um, Mr. Sharp Pencil down in Texas has, as I'm sure some of you have seen, been working hard at the landing gear. He sent me the mock-up after I got it put back together because the postal service kind of destroyed the, the wood mounting structure. But he got that to me. I got it put back together. This thing is a, <laughs> a work of art. The man is a genius when it comes to metal. But, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the mock up. I figured, hey, why not? I give you guys a little quick look of what it'll look like with landing gear on it. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> gonna be cool once the airplane's done. Again, the, the wheel will be about three inches lower just because of the stroke of the shock strut. But there we are with the landing gear. I mean, it's 
big beefy landing gear strut. This <laughs> strut's about an inch and a quarter in diameter. There's my thumb to give you some idea. I mean, it's pretty dang big. So, myself, Paul's hard at work, or was hard at work working on the mock-up. He got that to me. Um, we're still working on some landing gear stuff. We're gonna make this. We're gonna make this landing gear as detailed as you can possibly get. This is gonna be the premier F-14 Tomcat on the market, from what I'm doing and then how what he's working with me on the landing gear and all. So um, yeah, I'm gonna work this week on spending some time with the family while I'm actually in town before work sends me off. Do that and then spend a couple hours out here each day working on the Tomcat trying to get it ready again I'd like to be able to start making parting planes for everything this weekend and having uh, at least a tail section ready to mold next week so that's where I'm at um, yeah I hated to put the ads up on YouTube I'm sure y'all have seen it but it brings in a little bit of money and <laughs> right now the bank fundage is getting very low for this project since I mostly rely on building other projects for hobby money so once I uh, get some more money built up, I'm going to buy a lot more stuff to keep on going with the project. So y'all have a good week. Don't work too hard. And for those of y'all in the, the heat, drink plenty of water. Y'all have a good week. And until next time, see you then.